All right, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh, it's been a long time. Let me get to my um, YouTube channel so I can check your guys' comments while I do this. Yes, yes, yes. Channel. Come on. That was taking so long. All right. Um, so hello everyone. Hello Moonzer. Hello MV Titanic. Glorious or glamorous Titanic. Um, Moonzer Max. Um, Steve from Blue Ribbon. And there's Ken. Jonathan. Ozzy. Hello Ozzy. Ozzy always asks about the weather, which I'm pretty sure he probably commented that. So I'm going to say, um, it's a nice day. It's, um, it's a little chilly outside, which is what I like. But unfortunately, it's very sunny, which I don't like. <laughs> so I've been avoiding the sun. Um, but yeah. Uh, hello, Evan. So let's see. Shipwright says, top of the afternoon to you. Nice. Um... Kennard China set. Thank you so much. Yeah, it took a lot of work to collect all of this stuff. Um, I have here some um, Scottish shortbread um, and then some McVitie's chocolate covered um, digestives. So they're just tea biscuits and stuff. I am missing... Oh! I am missing my demi toss spoons. I need those to stir in the sugar. So I will be right back. If I can manage my way out of this little maze here. Be right back. Shiloh, how's it going? Tom C says, did Winston Churchill have a bodyguard when he was on the Queen Mary? Uh, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know. I mean, during peacetime, I don't see a reason why he would necessarily. You know, because it wasn't... Yeah, I don't, I don't, what is that? I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know. During wartime, I don't think he would either because he's literally on a ship full of, you know, soldiers. <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't know. Um, hey Steve, how's it going? Loser says, I just recently got a Queen Mary souvenir ashtray from service to add to my collection. Oh, yes, I have one right above me. It's it's great. I love those things. Shipwright says, been collecting Ocean Liner China myself. Mostly have Cunard, American Export Lines, United States Lines. Interesting. Yeah, I just... There was something about the Cunard Line one that I wanted. And it's funny, like... I didn't collect these because it was Queen Mary, necessarily. I was looking for a China set. I honestly thought I was just going to buy some random set off of eBay or something that somebody didn't want. And I came across this stuff. I didn't even know it was from Queen Mary or whatever, because I didn't really look at the title very, very well. And I saw this, and I'm like, wow, it's got this square, you know cubism type look to it it's very simple it's just white it's got gray and and um and uh amber color and you know a black line 
I thought like it's so simple, but yet so elegant. I was just like that. Just it that that just feels like something I would buy, you know. And so when I actually looked to see like how old it was, where it came from, I read the title. I was like Kinnard. And then I looked and, and I did a little bit of research and I found out, I'm like, oh, this was China that was, you know, used aboard the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth and a lot of other Cunard ships at the time. And I was, I was just happily surprised by that because I honestly wasn't going out there to look for, you know, Queen Mary China. So I was pleasantly surprised by it. it took me a long time to collect it because, you know, there's people who sell stuff for way over the price that it's worth. And occasionally you run into somebody who sells something for far under the price that it's worth because they don't know what it's worth. And those are the deals that I wait for. So, you know, this little milk jug, for instance, this tiny little milk jug, um, can sometimes go for $90 to $120 on eBay. I probably got that for $30. I'm not even kidding. Just this thing, $30.00. Because, uh, you know, somebody sold it, had no idea what it was worth, you know. So I, I look for deals like that on eBay for all sorts of things, including my model railroad. I, you know, told people I recently got a, a brand new locomotive from my model railroad, and I was very lucky because it was the very locomotive I wanted from the beginning and never have been able to get it because everybody's selling it for like $500, $600. But this one person was selling it dirt cheap. And I was like, okay, I cannot pass this up. Even if it's broken and not working, I can fix it. But this is, I can't pass this up. Luckily, when I got it, it was working just fine. So I was, I was so surprised. But yeah, it's, it's amazing when you can find good deals. Um, Steve says, the large teapots, which are hard to find, go for $250 to $300. Yeah, I have never once in... The last, I think it's been two years I've been looking on eBay for the large version of the teapot. Um, never found it. Never found No one in the two years I've been looking, and I look almost every day. I have the app on my phone. The app tells me. Like, I have it set so it tells me anytime someone posts anything with the word Cunard or Queen Mary and, um, you know, or, or tea set. But, I mean, I get notifications all the time for that. But, you know, um, and in the two years I've been looking, not a single person has sold one or, or, or put one up for sale. And so, yeah, those are very, very, very rare. And I do want one because sometimes I want to invite, like, my sister over for tea or my dad, you know. And the thing is, is I, I have two of these teapots. This one's the one that is I use all the time. But the one behind me is cracked because the last person that owned it didn't know you can't just pour straight boiling water into the teapot without heating it up first. Um, so they cracked it and then they tried to sell it and not tell me that it was cracked and I bought it and figured out the hard way. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I do want the larger version of the teapot because then I could use it for when people come over um i need another tea cup as well because the other tea cup was the same problem it's also cracked um probably from someone you know pouring boiling tea in there without heating up the cup first so um yeah i'm always on the lookout for those but these are also rare to find if someone does sell them they're selling them pretty expensive um one thing you do find a lot are the coffee cups. The Cunard has coffee cups. Um, but you find the ones that are not the Foley, because these are Foley brand. And uh, the coffee cups, you rarely find the Foley brand coffee cups. But when they do show up, you know, and I thought about buying the coffee cups, but I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm so close to having the full tea set. I don't want to distract myself with coffee cups, you know? Because then I'd have to buy the coffee jug. So I'm <laughs> just like, I don't want to do that. Um, geez, this sun is really 
Uh, Moonzer says, did you know usually Armas Queen Elizabeth had 680 telephones on board to be checked? For, <laughs> didn't know that. Of course, Austin Reed was main deck foyer. Yes, that one I knew. The, about the Austin Reed on main deck on Queen Elizabeth. Um, Little Gamers, it's been a while. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I've been very busy. A lot of different projects all at once. <laughs> And so because of that, um, I've just been so spread thin. And what's crazy is I started, so I used, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. But some of you have, I'm sure, because you're young. But um, I used ChatGPT, which is an AI. Um, and I talked to it to help me create schedules for myself and stuff like that. And, and I ask it advice for how to, like, you know, maintain my schedules and keep time with stuff and stay focused and stuff like that because I am so spread thin. Like, I don't think, I don't, like, nobody even gets it. Like, I I showed my dad my schedule. I was like, look at how busy I am throughout the day of all the things I need to do, not just here at home, but just, like, in general. And I'm like, you know, I've got friends who are constantly, like, asking me, hey, like, let's chat, let's talk. And I have to look at my schedule and be like, okay, do I have time? <laughs> <laughs> to chat and talk to somebody um you know like my friend chris the other day it was so great to talk to him but he saw that when i gave him my schedule like i had to cut time out of my work because i was actually working on a video i had to cut time out of my work to talk to him um but it was good because i, I needed to talk it's been a long time since i talked to him actually but yeah it's like i'm so spread thin and so i use chat gpt to help me schedule everything out um, and what was the point I was trying to make? I think it had something to do with how I'm doing, I guess. But, um, but yeah, so, but the interesting thing is ever since I've been on a schedule and I've been following the schedule to a T, now I don't get sleep, which is really weird because I allotted myself nine hours for sleep. That means that, you know, if I'm, that means I have like eight hours of sleep plus an extra hour if for some reason I wake up in the middle of the night and I, you know, I toss and turn or something like that. So I have, like, I gave myself nine hours to sleep. And for some reason, I only sleep for three. And then I wake up and I can't get back to sleep no matter what I do. And some of you guys know I do, you know, I do meditation and stuff like that on a regular basis. Not just for sleep, but, um, but to basically just center myself, keep myself in check, um, work through, um, problem solving things that I need to do. Um, and so usually I would turn to meditation to get me back to sleep. Hasn't been working lately. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll lay there for hours meditating in the middle of the night, hoping that it'll make me so sleepy I'll fall back to sleep. And I don't. It happened last night, actually. I got three hours of sleep last night. And then, you know, I had to wake up 9 a.m. this morning, do my exercises and stuff, and I was just exhausted. And I hate feeling like that because then I don't get anything done, you know? So there is something up where, like, my brain just does not like to be on a schedule. Okay. So I pour half of the tap water out and pour in boiling water to um, bring up the ooh, that was hot, <laughs> to bring up the temperature of the teapot and the teacup uh, slowly so that way I don't crack them because um, they will crack from thermal shock Moonzer says, to my knowledge, Queen QE never had an Austin Reed in the main hall. Yeah, I don't think so. They had other boutiques, but not Austin Reed. Cool guy 52 says, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing all right. I could use a haircut. I was thinking, because I always, I always have like the same haircut all the time. I just like basically buzz it very short. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I'll try something new. But I always do that because I have this kind of hair that I can't 
style it, there are very few, like, types of hair gel and stuff like that that will actually work for my hair. Otherwise, they don't work at all. Um, and even then, they only work for a short period of time. And so, you know, and then certain haircuts, like, my hair just becomes fuzzy. It just doesn't work. And so every time I... Every time I grow my hair out a little bit so I can, like, decide on a different style, I always end up just going back to my usual cutting it short because I I can't figure out what would work. Like, nothing's worked. All my life, my hair has always been a problem. Um, at least I have hair, though. <laughs> I know some people who don't. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're... just be happy that you have hair. I'm like, okay, I'm happy I have hair. Um... see evan scott says sleeping pills i don't like sleeping pills because they leave me groggy throughout the daytime so even though i wake up i end up being groggy throughout the day um i do take melatonin every night that's because i have schizophrenia so if i don't take melatonin i will not sleep at all i will be awake for several days until i have a heart attack so yeah i do have to uh take melatonin every night problem is lately with the schedule i only get three hours of sleep so uh, it has been kind of frustrating in that sense but <laughs> hey jason how's it going exercises in the morning not a chance i know it has been difficult because i've been doing exercise before eating breakfast which is difficult because when i wake up the first thing i want to do is eat breakfast you know and I don't eat a lot. Like, I know I'm really fat, you guys, but I really don't eat a lot. I have a small meal for for breakfast, usually like a bowl of cereal, you know, and then for lunch, you know, sometimes I have, like, I'll make myself, like, a roast beef sandwich, and it's, like, you know, two slices of roast beef, some cheese, maybe some lettuce and tomato. That's it. I, I don't really eat a lot. You know, for dinner... You know, I we don't eat a lot of junk food or anything like that. I usually make home-cooked food, you know. Um, like, the other night we had, like, these Japanese, like, pancakes. They're, like, they're made of cabbage and stuff, and you put a little bit of, like, you know, like, you put, like, these different Japanese sauces on it. I forget what they're called. Like, I think it's called okonomiyaki. So I made okonomiyaki. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, you know, I don't, I don't eat poorly. You know, so yeah, it's, I, but it's because I have, I, I completely lack exercise because I'm like at my computer all day working on stuff, but yeah, gotta look out for that. Especially if I want to travel, I, um, I need to empty this out. Um, you know, I want to travel and I don't want to be like the guy that has to buy like two seats on the plane. So I've been trying very hard to lose weight. And actually, again, going back to ChatGPT, it gave me a wonderful suggestion. I was like, how can I get exercise while I have to be at my computer working on videos all day? And it was like, simple. Just buy an underdesk elliptical. I was like, they make those? And I went and looked on Amazon you can buy an underdesk elliptical for a hundred dollars. I mean, that's not cheap, but I mean, it's definitely cheaper than any other brand, you know. And so, um, so I was like, all right. So I went and bought one. And so now, um, in the mornings, I'll use the elliptical for exercise as part of my exercise regimen. But then uh, during the day when I'm at my computer, I'll just be pedaling on the elliptical the whole time. So, yeah, it's been quite useful. Oh, I need to 122, so that'll come out 126. There we go. Okay, empty half of this out.
So yeah, even if you guys don't like the idea of AI, it's <laughs> it's really useful sometimes. Yes, today is Earl Grey tea. It's my favorite one. I can't deny it. You know, and I only have it on, you know, like, at most once a day. So it's, you know, I just, I have to... I can't, like, I have the other flavors sitting in my cupboard. I have the Yorkshire Gold. I have the the um, the Lady Grey tea. I have the English breakfast tea and the Irish breakfast tea. And I just, I, I have to go with Earl Grey. I love it so much. Steve says, Mr. Dad's cooking channel. Yeah, you want to know something about that? I told him, when he said, oh, I want to start a YouTube channel, I said, okay. I said, just use your name for the title of the channel because you might decide later on to do something different. And he didn't listen to me and he was like, no, I know for a fact I want to do a cooking channel. I'm like, okay. So, you know, we name it Dishing with Joe and he starts making videos. And he, he discovers a problem that I try to tell him about where, you know, people gravitate towards certain videos. So they weren't watching any of his other videos about, like, you know, Japanese food or anything like that. They all wanted to see the Mexican food. And so my dad doesn't like cooking Mexican food as often as you might think. It's, first of all, it's expensive, it's time consuming, and, um, and he gets bored of it. He wants to, to cook other things. And so as a result, all his viewers just wanted to see Mexican food. And he was like, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, I'm like, that's why you, you switch to doing something else. But because your channel is called Dishing with Joe, there's very little options for you to do. I'm like, cooking is all you can do. And so he was just kind of like, oh, well, I don't want to do it. And, you know, I don't blame him. The Mexican food does cost a lot, you know, and we're not, you know, we're not rich or anything. Like, you know, it, it was definitely difficult to put together those recipes um but yeah so he's kind of like quit on that channel because he's like oh people want something i don't want to provide and so i was like you should have kept your other channel name because now you're stuck with that so <clears throat> yeah <laughs> That's the problem, like, I, you know, you try to give people advice on their channels, but, you know, you can only tell them so much. They want to do their own thing. So, I, I was like that once, you know. I didn't want anybody's advice, I just wanted to do my own thing. But then later on, I just learned, I was like, you know what, these people have been through it all, they know, you know. Um... Oh, it's time for the tea. Good thing I noticed the time, because a, lo a lot of times I accidentally uh, forget about the tea and it overbrews, and it tastes gross when that happens. I'll just give it a little stir. Okay. That's ready. Um, Lindsay says, Alex, do you think they should allow access to the captain's cabin instead of being behind glass? No. Um, because the captain's cabin on the Queen Mary... Um, it's basically preserved, mostly as it was when it was last used. And to ensure that it stays properly preserved and nobody's going in there and doing things, it should remain behind glass. There are certain areas that don't need to be behind glass, like when you go to the main hall, every all the surfaces are more easily cleanable if they get dirty. Um, there's a lot of, like... Uh, hard surfaces and very little um, artifacts that are out in the open. 
So it's easy to take care of main hall, but it's not easy to take care of the captain's cabin with all the little, you know, artifacts like like uh, desk lamps and, you know, fans and things like that. When, it, when you get a lot of those little things, including linens and upholstered chairs that are original, you don't want the general public to have easy access to that. I mean, you know, you go to Disneyland and literally you ride Haunted Mansion, there is a wall on the Haunted Mansion that is known for people spitting on it. And to this day, when you pass by the wall, it's all discolored and stuff, and you're just thinking like, oh, that's interesting that they did that as part of the, the ride. But no, that's from people spitting on it over the years. People do disgusting things. Um, and so there are, there are things on the ship that need to be behind glass. So, yeah, that's one of them. <laughs> I bet a lot of people didn't know about the spitting wall. And people can be pretty gross. Like, why would you spit, you know? But people just do it because they can. It's like when I was c complaining about the the um, lifts on the Queen Mary. Uh, they have these beautiful silver bronze doors that are almost a mirror finish. They're so shiny that, that they're almost like a, a, a perfect mirror, almost. Um, but people have you know, carved uh, graffiti into the doors. And it's like, dude, those doors date back to when the Queen Mary was in service. And some person just thought it was okay to, like, mark up the doors, probably with, like, a diamond ring or something like that. But, it, yeah, it's just like, why? You know, like, what what compels you to want to destroy something historic, something beloved. I don't get it. I don't... Ugh. Yeah. Um... Jeffrey says, Hi, Alex. It's been a while since you had a tea time. I'm glad you're doing these again. Thank you so much. Yeah, I... I wasn't sure if I was going to keep doing them. Um... You know... It, When you're on YouTube, and you're like me, <laughs> I like to connect with people. I like to talk to people about the stuff I'm passionate about, you know? Like, my, my family isn't passionate about the same things that I am. So I can't just sit, sit there all day talking about trains and ships because they'll, their eyes will glass over and gloss over. They'll become glassy. And... You know, that you can tell that they, they'll just stop paying attention, you know. And I don't, I don't blame them. Who wants to hear someone drone on and on about something that they're not interested in? Um, so having a group of people that I can just, you know, sit around here and talk to you guys and, you know, have some tea, it's wonderful. But you do run into the issues that, you know, sometimes... You open yourself up for ridicule, for, you know, all kinds of things that happen. And, you know, I... There's an argument to be said that, oh, you know, don't complain because you're, you're putting yourself out there. And it's true. That's totally true. If you're going to stand on a soapbox and make yourself the center of attention you should expect things to happen. But it's still not that pleasant when bad things happen, you know? So I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know. Do I want to just retreat behind the camera and stop doing face-to-face -face live interactions? Um, but I don't know. I'm just going to play it by ear because I know that a lot of people enjoy these live streams. It's a way for them to socialize without having to literally leave the house to socialize um you know and it's also a way for people to connect with others uh about these you know hobbies and subjects that we love that you probably can't find anywhere else you know like i have a friend who is you know telling me like you know you're the only friend i have that i can talk to about trains and disneyland he's like you know i don't know anybody else that i can talk to about that kind of stuff and so, you know, I was like, yeah, it's, you know, it, 
people with our interests are few and far between, you know? So that's one of the reasons why I like doing these tea time streams. But yeah, it, I won't lie, it is difficult sometimes. You just never know what's going to happen. So... Ability page says people are mean about these streams. Oh, I don't know if I want to get into it because I don't want to rehash something that I think is over. But, um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, look, let's just put it this way I've come across many people, many, many people, not just one person, <laughs> in case they're watching, but many people who. You know, they don't know me. They have their opinions about me or what they think about me. And they want to voice those opinions and things on here. And, or sometimes it's people that are being nice. Like there's one person, well, no, actually there's a couple people that I know currently. Yeah, at least three people that I know currently who are very nice. But they're a bit intense. They will message me over and over and over again as though they know me personally. And it is a bit scary at times. Because this person, and you know, they think they know you so well and you've never met them before. And so it's a problem that a lot of YouTubers face. There's actually a terminology for it. Um, let me see if I can find the terminology. Um, Okay, well, that was a mistake. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know how I'm going to find it. But anyway, let's just take my word for it. There's, a, there's actually a, a, a name for a situation where, where someone online, even a celebrity, um, their, you know, their viewers or their fans or whoever, they've watch them for so long and and seen their videos and movies and streams or whatever for so long that they start to feel like they know the person but in actuality they don't actually know them they've never met them they never talked to them before um and that happens with a lot of youtubers and it's happened to me many times and those folks while they're nice they can be pretty scary in the sense that they will sometimes track you down one time I had a person, this was back when I lived in California, but I had a person who actually found out where I lived, came to my house unannounced, knocked on my door, and wanted to, like, talk to me and say hello. And they, like I said, they were very nice. But I was just, like, you know, thinking, I'm like, why would this person think it's okay to track me down and come to my house? Like, that's just scary. You know, so ever since that day, I've had to be extra careful about, um, you know, my identity and giving out information about myself that might reveal anything about myself, like where I live and stuff like that. So it has definitely been a wild ride over these past seven years. <laughs> There we go. Uh, Jason got it. Parasocial relationships, yeah. And Matthew also got it as well, yeah. Parasocial relationships. It's, yeah, it's an actual phenomenon that happens with people who are in, you know, in front of cameras. So it's, it, yeah. So I've had actually a lot of that. You wouldn't think so. 
like you know I've I've have some friends that you know who are YouTubers and you know some of them have like oh I've never been through that and I'm like you know <laughs> uh, like my friend Chris you know he's got a popular channel I was like have you ever had someone who was in like a parasocial relationship with you and he was just like no and I'm like I've got like a third of your subscribership numbers and I have had many over the years you know so ability page thank you so much for the for the donation all right so um Oh, hello, Goofy Rolls. Evan says, would you ever try the Apple Vision Pro? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I have a... Um, what do they call that? A Meta Quest 2. I've, I have, I've had that for a couple of years now. And I used to use it a lot when I first got it. But I... Come to think of it, I haven't used it in a whole year so far. And the reason why, I'm see, I'm not the kind of person that spends a lot of money on something and then just, you know, tosses it aside. That's not who I am. Um, usually, I will only spend money on something I think I'll use for a lot, a lot, a long, a long time, a, forever. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, so I got the the Quest Two because I was like, oh, you know, I could play games with my friends, you know, it's a great way for me to hang out with them, even though I live like a thousand miles away from them, you know, and I can get exercise and do stuff like that. And it was great for a while, but a lot of my friends were not usually available at the same time, um, you know, and the one friend that is closest to me who actually had a Quest 2... You know, he, he wanted to play these games that were just so advanced that I couldn't play them. So, it was, yeah, it was difficult. And then, I would often have to, to like, you know, play the games with strangers or whatever. But I was always, like, the youngest, or, no, I'm sorry, the oldest person <laughs> in the game. Like, all the time, I was always the oldest person. Like, there would be, like kids that were like 12 or whatever i'm like i can't talk to these people like i have no like connection with youth whatsoever like <laughs> i'm like an old fart compared to them i'm like so i don't i didn't like the feeling of being the oldest person in the room so i was like i'm just done with this so i haven't used it in a year um it's just simply because like i've just it, it it hasn't proven to be useful for me so um yeah but but yeah, I would try the Apple Vision Pro because it looks pretty interesting. I don't think I would buy it though, just because of what I've been through with the with the Meta Quest 2. I was just like, I don't need it, you know, and I never use it. So Oh, War Thunder have heard of that. Yeah, cool guy 52 says, I know you're not a gamer, but I think that the next War Thunder update will be about ocean liners and their military look alike. Yeah. I wish I could be enthusiastic about it, but it's like you said, I'm not really a gamer. Like, I've tried certain games, and there's certain things that I still like that I still play. You know, like, I have, like, a Titanic simulator. I have a Disneyland Railroad simulator. Um, and then on rare occasion, I get together with my friends, and we play this World War II game called Enlisted. But that's on rare occasion, when we're all, you know available to play something um but yeah otherwise i don't really play games i'm also too busy to do it too Jeffrey says, any updates on your UK trip? No, unfortunately. Like I said, it's going to take a long time. Like, it's not going to take a month, two months, three months, four months, even six months. 
it's gonna we're we're talking like probably like 2025 or 2026. That's how long it's gonna be. Because I do not make enough money to save up fast enough. So I'm literally saving like dollar by dollar. And I'm trying to do better, but this YouTube thing is very difficult. Because, you know, I'll work on a video for months and then it, it just doesn't, it's not popular, you know? It doesn't get the views that it needs for me to save up the money I need. So, you know, like I did, I did a full virtual tour of the Queen Mary and that video did okay, but just not what I was expecting. It, it, it needed to, to have a lot more views and it just didn't. So I have to, in, when, when there's situations like that, I have to make more and more and more videos. And sometimes people just don't watch. You know, there's something about the video maybe that just doesn't appeal to them. And it's a, it's a guessing game the whole time. I have to go, what, what am I doing wrong? Or what, what is it they really want to see? So it's a guessing game. And unfortunately, I've been losing that game for the last six months. Um, I haven't been putting out stuff that people really, really want to see. Well, aside from my January repair update of the Queen Mary, that was a saving grace because that has proven to be the most popular um, update video I've ever put out for some reason. People loved it. I don't... They watched the whole thing, which is actually pleasantly surprising um but yeah um so i've actually come up with an idea to start a third channel because i think i told you guys when i did my last live stream in the train room that i'm moving all my railroad stuff to my original railroad channel which is called alex the railroader and i filmed i recently filmed an update to my train layout which i have to put that together and then post it on the Alex the Railroader channel. But I'm thinking about doing a third channel. I talked to my friend Eric. My friend Eric um, is, is proudly autistic. And I say proudly because obviously like he's lived his whole life and he he loves to help people, you know, who are going living with autism and stuff like that. And but I talked to him and I said, hey, you know, you've lived under a rock your whole life. You haven't watched a lot of movies and TV shows. A lot of the most popular stuff that everybody loves, like Indiana Jones, Star Wars, um, you know, uh, Harry Potter, all that kind of stuff. He has never seen any of that stuff. He's never seen Back to the Future. He's never seen Alien or Aliens or any of the Alien movies. All these things people love, he has never seen them. And so I thought, why don't we do a reaction channel where... <laughs> You know, he reacts to these movies and things because he's hilarious. Like, he's absolutely hilarious when he watches stuff. And so I think that I'm going to start that as well. And that'll be like one video per week at most. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, I think that's another way. And he and I can split ad revenue if the channel becomes popular. That's if the channel becomes popular because, uh, yeah, you have to think it's like you have to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours before you can even monetize your channel but yeah so i'm thinking of ways to be able to make more money um so that way i can go on these trips sooner but i think i bit off more than i can chew with that uk trip because it's the most expensive trip that i had planned to go on i have to save up around eight thousand dollars for it I have little under half of that amount, and it's it's not moving now. It's like literally I'm saving dollar by dollar every month. Um, so I was kind of like, I should have just gone on my New Orleans trip first or gone on one of my other trips that I was planning to go on that were much cheaper. Like I was planning to do a trip to Southern California and go to the Queen Mary, and that's a, another cheaper trip which would cost just as much as going to New Orleans and so I was like if I go on those trips before I go on the UK trip and make videos history videos about that subject I can produce history videos which will make me more money including vlogs then I can save up for the UK trip but what I'm worried about is that I can't save up for 
the New Orleans trip or any of the other trips. It's becoming quite a mess. Because I know everybody's been waiting for me to go to this UK trip. And I have too. And I'm not giving up on it. I'm going to go. But, yeah, it's just been difficult. It's like, when I can only put, like, five bucks a month into my savings, it's, it's not, it's not good, you know. It's going to take forever. Um... Zemo84 says, Hi, greetings from Italy. Love your videos and the passion you put in everything you share with your viewers. Oh, thank you so much. Todd says, My wife used the Quest 2 and has Beat Saber, her Apple Watch shows her heart rate really up there. Yeah, I was use, I was playing Beat Saber too, and I'm so bad at it. I got to a point where I plateaued. I was like, okay, I'm, I, I can't improve beyond this level, and this level is too low for me to be able to, like, do better songs. So, yeah. Justin says, how many vehicles or cars could the Queen Mary carry at once? Oh, I think she had a capacity for 16 cars. I'm pretty sure. I was reading about that like a month ago. But off the top of my head, I can't remember. It's either 8 or 16. I don't know why my brain would, would double the number, but that's possible. But I believe it was like 8 or 16 was the capacity. Shipwright says, personally liked the Queen Mary tour, probably not going to make it to Long Beach anytime soon, and the guided look was nice. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to create something that was very, you know, um, detailed. Detailed, because a lot of people, they post, like, you know, parts of the ship and stuff like that, and maybe they'll show, like, some before and after pictures and stuff, but I wanted something that was really, really, really detailed. Cool guy says, if the Titanic 2 was a thing, would you go on it? No. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't believe in using the Titanic as a, you know, as a vessel for entertainment. Um, in the sense that, like, rebuilding it for entertainment purposes. Um, so yeah, I don't think I would do, I would do that. Air Eero says, Do you think it was necessary that Disney took out the Queen Mary's docking equipment at the stern 30 plus years ago? Absolutely not, no. It was not necessary. They did it because they were planning to put in a pool. <sighs> yeah, it's just it makes me mad just thinking about it. But the thing about preserving history is you're not supposed to destroy historic artifacts and the historic look of a place for the sake of preservation. That's not how it works. And Disney does not like that kind of preservation. They're not about that. They don't preserve things. They might rebuild something, but they don't preserve. And so that the company just didn't understand that kind of thing about Queen Mary, 
and they went and removed all the docking equipment at the stern, and then, you know, some of it got sold off, some of it got scrapped. Some of it stayed uh, on the dock and stuff like that, but, yeah. Shipwright says, if it helps, Kinard does offer a shorter voyage of the Queen Mary 2 New York to New York cheaper than the transatlantic. That's true, but that's not the... Like, we're not going on the Queen Mary 2 just to go on the Queen Mary 2. We're going on the Queen Mary 2 because our goal is to get to the UK to film historic places. So our goal is to travel around the UK and stuff like that. Um, but we want to take the Queen Mary 2 over there because you might as well kill two birds with one stone. Instead of, you know, paying for a plane flight plus a short cruise on the Queen Mary 2, you might as well just pay for the transatlantic. And plus, my friend and I, you know, Chris Chris and I, we really, really want to experience a transatlantic crossing. He's always wanted to do it, and I've always wanted, well, not always, actually, but I have wanted to do it for the last five years. You know, so, yeah, it's that's kind of why we're we're doing that, you know. And originally, I was planning to take two voyages, one to get there and one to get back. But in an effort to try to to lessen the cost of traveling in order to do this trip sooner, uh, we decided to do only one voyage on the Queen Mary 2. Uh, and that's on the way back. But on the way there, we would fly. Which I'm kind of disappointed about because I don't like flying. I think I, I put out a video a couple weeks ago about how much I hate flying. <laughs> um, but I have to. I just have to. There's just no way around it. Sorry, I'm just reading comments. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Air Aero, yeah, the... So, yes, the, the telegraphs on the Queen Mary are made of brass, um... But they were painted uh, like a seafoam green or bluish color, kind of. Um, but uh, at some point when the ship was in Long Beach, they removed the paint from them and just left the brass. So they didn't paint it a brass color, they left the original brass that was under the paint. And recently, <laughs> sadly, someone did something to them. Because the, the brass should be shiny and polished, you know, when it's not painted. Um, but someone took, like, a power sander to it or something because they scuffed up the all the brass telegraphs. They scuffed them all up, so it, they look terrible now. It's really sad. I don't know what happened. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they didn't see that they were doing something horrible, like scuffing up brass, and then not stopping... Instead, they just plowed right through all of them. Like, I don't get, like, oh, it's just one of those things that irks me. It's just like, if you see that you're damaging something, why do you keep going? Just stop, you know? Like, but it's one of those things where, like, people go like, oh, well, I've already caused the damage. Might as well make the rest of them look like that. Conrad says, what? number cup of tea are you on? I haven't even finished my first cup yet. I'm <coughs> only got like halfway through the cup. I have a problem where I don't I don't have a sense of thirst. 
so I often forget if there's tea or water in front of me, and I won't drink it. <laughs> in fact, I don't think I've... Yeah, no, I woke up at 9 a.m. this morning. It is 1.57 p.m. right now, and I haven't drank a sip of water at all today. I didn't even realize it till now. Didn't even realize it. I don't, I don't have a sense of thirst, so... <laughs> It's it's tough sometimes because I forget I have I have to drink something. <sighs> yeah. Um Ken says Alex Disneyland question, what age do you think is old enough to bring a kid for the first time? My daughter will be 3 next month and wondering if it's too young. It's not cheap, so don't want to waste money. I would say, honestly, the best case scenario would be five or six years old, but the absolute maximum youngest would be four. Because four years old is about when kids start remembering stuff in the long term. Um, Although some kids like me actually remember things all the way till when I was an infant, but um, but yeah, uh, I would honestly say five or six years old because then they'll remember it more. So yeah, and and they'll also understand the park better, and they'll be tall enough to go on a lot of the rides that you know that you know kids want to go on and stuff like that. So yeah. Five or six is the earliest, I would say. Yeah. Chris, you want to go across the ocean on a kayak? Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is scary. That is so scary. I oh wow. Jawsome says, "Hey Alex, have you watched the Titanic 2? It's really bad quality and uses the Queen Mary as a set." I know of it, but I've never seen it. I try not to watch movies that I know I'm not going to like. Um because I have very little time to begin with, so I I don't really have time to watch a bad movie. So um so yeah, I yeah, I haven't seen it. Although, I do make an occasional exception for a movie that I know is going to be bad. So, for instance, I watched that movie... Queen, Queen Mary Haunting? Or Queen Mary Haunt? Or Haunted Queen... I forget what it's called. It was the most recent movie about the Queen Mary and the ghosts and the demons and whatever. I watched that knowing it was going to be bad, and indeed it was very terrible. I can't say enough bad things about that movie, honestly. Um, King of Battleships says, I wonder what would need to be done to stop the Queen Mary from bending. Steve answered correctly, but proper ballasting. The ship needs to be ballasted properly. Uh, she hasn't been ballasted properly. I mean, she's been ballasted, but just not properly. <laughs> so, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Steve is once again correct. To properly ballast the ship, you use uh, you use water, um, because that's what she was originally ballasted with was water. Um, so, yeah, you would fill the side tanks with water um, in order to properly ballast the ship. Um, the bottom tanks, which are in the double bottom of the keel area. Those are filled with a type of drilling mud. Um, it's easy to pump out when they fill it with water and stuff like that, so that's why they use mud. Um, but the mud is, is there to take the place of the weight of the boilers. Um, it doesn't completely take the place of the weight, 
but it does a good job at keeping the ship upright so she doesn't keel over. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it needs more ballast. It needs more weight in the bottom to, to you know, stop the ship from um, the upwards hogging that uh, the ship was doing, is doing currently. Um, King of Battleship says, I feel like the removal of the machinery has something to do with her bending. It has everything to do with it, yes. <laughs> uh, a ship would not normally, you know, hog upwards, uh, you know, with all the machinery in place. So, yeah, it, it definitely has to do with there being no machinery uh, in the boiler rooms and stuff like that. That's the reason why the ship... Uh, it has an upwards bend to her. So, yeah, they do need to properly balance the ship. I think another way that they could also do it is, like, if they were putting some kind of attraction down there in the boiler rooms, um, using heavy materials could also help as well. So, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ship writes, it's just out of curiosity, if need be, could the Queen Mary's watertight doors still be closed? Not all of them. Some of them, yes. There are a couple watertight doors on the ship that um, are capable of being manually opened and closed, um, but most of them cannot close uh, because they have either been removed or altered or they are welded in place depending on what areas of the ship you're at and for what purpose it's been done um but there are like maybe one or two watertight doors on the ship that can be manually closed yeah Steve says, Alex, the new glass installed at the observation bar. Thanks to Shiloh for the info. It looks great. It's actual glass, low profile. Yeah, I figured it'd be actual glass because what it looked like to me when they were installing it was it looked like the kind of glass that a rich person with a beach house might put around their patio. So it's just like glass panes with a steel underframe and no steel on top or the sides. Um, so it'd be minimally invasive, which I was happy about that it's minimally invasive. I don't like that they put it there in the first place, but if it has to be there, I'm glad they chose that type of wind barrier because um, it's, it's minimally visually intrusive. Um, but yeah. Um, and when you say low profile, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean, like, it's it's not as tall as the plexiglass dividers were? Or do you mean that it's just, it does you don't see the framework of it because it's just the glass? Right. Okay, Steve, see... see if you're going to answer a question, <laughs> you should answer with more than one word, because I, I... Oh, only about two feet above the wooden... Okay, that's good. That's... Okay. That's good. Okay, so, yeah. Only two feet... Oh, that's good, because the last ones were, like, pff, at least four or five feet higher up. They were ridiculously huge, but, yeah, just two feet, that's... That's pretty good. Yeah, okay. I can deal with that. <laughs> NCC says they should build wooden replicas of the boilers. They can't. They can't do that out of wood because wood is combustible. 
And so there are laws about building wood structures within a structure, you know, and how it can be done. I used to build haunt mazes uh, for a nonprofit, and that was well over a decade ago now, but um, I used to build haunt mazes, and I used to have to build them up to modern building codes, which at the time was not common. You know, like, you would have all kinds of, like Knott's Berry Farm, whatever, they'd build all their stuff out of wood. Um, but our clients insisted that our stuff be fireproof and ADA compliant and all that kind of stuff. And so I had to design the, the mazes. And I was the designer. I was the actual designer of the mazes. I had to design them out of fireproof materials and modern building materials and build them to modern building codes. And so me and, uh, and our team, we would go out there and build everything once everything was designed. And, um, yeah, it was crazy because <laughs> it all have to be taken down. Um, but yeah, you can't build with wood, not in California, at least. King of Battleship says, if you are on the Queen Mary, can you feel her moving with the tide slash water? No, because the tide is so slow that it takes hours for the ship to move up or move down. So you can't feel the ship moving. However, the times that you can feel the ship moving, and only slightly, is high winds. The high winds can cause the ship to roll ever so slightly by one degree or so. Um... And so you, you might feel that. Uh, most recently, there was a huge uh, like rainstorm in California with high winds. And someone actually took a video of the ship rolling in the, in the heavy weather. Uh, and it was rolling by about one degree, which isn't much. But it was enough to see the, um, it was enough to see the, uh, uh, the gangways moving by a, a, an inch or two, um, which is not something you usually see. So that was interesting. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, in a storm or something or high winds, you can see the ship uh, moving this way and that way about one inch or so, one or two inches. Um, but uh, yeah, you can't really feel the ship moving with the tide because the tide is too slow. Jawsome, yes, I have heard about those restaurants on celebrity cruise ships. He says, Alex, what are your thoughts on the survey that CBS reported on that Disney parks are the biggest ripoffs across North America? A lot had to do with the escalating price and maintenance lessening. I haven't seen or heard of that, but it doesn't surprise me because that's kind of how I think of the Disney parks now. I used to be a big Disneyland fan. Um, and even though when I worked there, it was still very pricey. There was still a lot of stuff that was worth the cost back then, but that was almost 20 years ago. Ooh. Oh, that's... I don't... Yeah. Oh, man. 20 years. <laughs> I feel... I'm starting to feel old, even though I'm not old. But, yeah. Um, yeah, the thing about about the Disney parks is that they keep taking things away from the experience and people just keep paying for it. You know, it's like I always told people, back when my channel was solely a Disney channel, this, believe it or not, for some of you folks, this was a, a channel entirely dedicated to Disneyland at one point. Um, 
I used to tell people, I said, look, I'm the kind of person where if something does not feel worth it, I will not pay for it. And I will eventually abandon it. And I think a lot of people did not expect that I was telling the truth about that. I think a lot of people were like, oh, you're one of those Disney fans that'll just keep paying for stuff anyway. And I was just like, no, I'm really not. You know, like, as big of a fan of Disneyland as I was, I was not, like, you know, a person who was blind to the situation. You know, and... Even to this day, like, you know, I have friends who want to meet me at Disneyland the next time I come to Southern California, but in my head, I'm just like, I don't want to go there. You know, like, I actually say that to people. I'm, I'm like, I don't want to go there. Uh, you know, I, there are things I miss. Yeah, I miss riding the Disneyland Railroad, but even that experience is not the same anymore. You know, it's... Eh, yeah, so, I mean, but, yeah, I, you know... My friend Eric, he wants me to go to Disneyland with him next time I come down to California, but I, I honestly have to really think about that, because I'm like, I don't, to me it's not worth the money, and it's a lot of money. And the experience is so stressful. I'm just kind of like, I don't want to deal with that stress. So I told a lot of my friends and family, I'm like, if I come to Southern California to visit everybody, you're going to be meeting me on the Queen Mary, because I'm not going to Disneyland. You know, so yeah, I don't. It's terrible. John Hill says, Hey Alex, has there been any update on the video for the Yarrow Project? I am very limited as to what I can respond because the Yarrow Project is not personally mine, it is uh, uh, owned by the. Um, Fog Bank Industrial Arts Company and is also a work that is owned by you know Stephen Ablonsi as well so Steve is in the chat so there's not much I can say all I can tell you is that work on the video has progressed um, but it may be a very long time until you guys see it trying to I don't think I can say why um, but yeah um, but it has progressed especially recently um, so it is happening yeah Steve was like oh boy it has yeah the video has progressed in fact Steve was asking me before the live stream started he wanted to chat with me I think about the video um, and I was like, oh, I can't talk right now. I'm going to do a live stream. So, yeah, we actually have been working on it. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm not at liberty to discuss it because I do not own the project. It's not mine. Um. Air Eero... Um, I am not a fan of anime, but there are animes that I do like. Um, but I'm, like, of the older generation. I like stuff like Akira, you know, which is, you know, a, a classic anime that... I tried to get my friend to watch it, and he was just like, I don't see the appeal. I'm like, how could you not see the appeal? But, but he's used to to animes that have far exceeded the capabilities of that movie. You know, uh, my dad is very into the Japanese anime Matt Cross, and by proxy, is that the right word? I am also somewhat interested in Matt Cross. Um, you know, stuff like that. There's, there's a few things here and there. Uh, when it comes to modern stuff, I really liked the show Death Note. Um, pretty interesting. Uh... I've seen a lot of animes recently because one of my friends is very into anime, um, but I can't recall off the top of my head one that I really liked. I can't remember, um, but yeah. But I'm not necessarily an anime fan. Steve says when 
talking about the Yara Project video, when we can publicly show it, trust me, you all will get to see the video. Conrad says, we can keep our expectations then for the Yara Project. I have to be very careful what I say, but... I do think there are a lot of surprises going to be in store in time. <laughs> I think that, yeah, I think there will be a lot of surprises in store. Chris says, hey, Alex, next month on March 6th, I will be 37 years old. Oh, cool. Well, happy birthday. Um, yeah, uh, I will become an uncle this May. So I am super stoked for that. That's something I've been looking forward to. I will have a nephew. And I think about that every day now. Like, literally every day. I think about, like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cool to be an uncle and, you know, and we'll have a new member in our family and stuff. Like, it is unbelievable. I think about that stuff every day. <sighs> but yeah, I'm excited. There's a lot of stuff happening in my life that is going to be very fantastic and very positive, so. Maybe one day I'll have my nephew on for tea time <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> I'll be like, do not stir the tea in a circle. You stir back and forth. And they'll be like, oh, come on. <laughs> Steve says, almost like having a baby brother. It really is. You know, I've always wanted to have a brother. I have a sister, and as we grew up, we never really had anything in common. You know, so it was just kind of like, you know, but, but yeah, I've always wanted a brother and I never had one. So it'll be kind of like having a brother. I had an uncle when I was younger that was only 10 years older than me. So he was kind of like an older brother. Um, but then after uh, high school, he went and moved on with his life and, and then we like, almost never saw him. Unfortunately, he passed away um, when I was a teenager, so I never really got to get close to him at all after he became an adult and after I became an adult, unfortunately. But Chris says, hey Alex, would you watch an anime? Ugh, this thing is in the way. An anime if they had the RMS Queen Mary in it during War Years. I was thinking about that, actually. I was... I think about things all the time, because I'm like, I want to see if there's something I can do. And I was and I was thinking, firstly, I was like, I don't think I could convince a company like Netflix or AMC or something like that to make a TV show about the Queen Mary. So I thought, well, you know, animes, even though they're expensive, they're relatively cheap if you do it yourself. <laughs> I was actually thinking in my head, I'm like, is there a way I could do an anime about the Queen Mary? Because my friend Eric, he, he does like cartoons on his channel and I help him with designing his story and, and giving him advice on how to animate things. I myself am not an animator, but I, I, I do dabble in art on occasion. So I'm able to give him advice on how to animate stuff. 
And I thought, you know, I could do animation myself. I have the skills to, to do it. But then I thought, like, that's just an expensive endeavor I'm just not ready to take on. So I don't know. But I did consider doing an anime of the Queen Mary, believe it or not. <laughs> And a lot of the characters would have been voiced by me. I'm actually a very good voice artist. Um, you know, I have my limits, of course, but, but yeah. Aussies says, how about Pinky and the Brain cartoon? You know, when I was a kid, my dad didn't let me watch a lot of the cartoons on TV because he thought modern cartoons were not appropriate for children. And I can kind of see why, actually. <laughs> um, so there were a lot of cartoons I wasn't allowed to watch, and Pinky and the Brain was one of them. Although Pinky and the Brain was probably one of the least offensive cartoons that uh, I was barred from watching but like you know like one of the cartoons when i was a, when i was a kid all my friends would be like oh have you seen the the latest episode of cow and chicken i'm like no i'm not allowed to watch that show <laughs> so and if you watch the show cow and chicken uh you will see why my dad didn't let me watch it when i was a kid and even my, i myself i probably wouldn't be comfortable letting a child watch that kind of stuff so yeah but uh, i wasn't allowed to watch a lot of modern cartoons when I was a kid. For me, you know, like, they would put the channel on Boomerang so I could see stuff like Tom and Jerry and Looney Tunes and all that from the old days, but I wasn't allowed to watch modern cartoons. Even Spongebob was borderline because there were certain episodes of Spongebob that were just kind of like, should kids be watching this kind of stuff, you know? Steve. Yeah, it wasn't even the hidden stuff, too. There were things, like... I remember, like, being at a friend's house, and and the show Cow and Chicken was on, and, like, there was, like, an episode where, like, the, the cow was, like, rubbing its udders or whatever in, in a very provocative way. And, I'm, and it, so it wasn't hidden. It was, like, right there in front of people. It was just, like... What? And then the way that, like, the cow would always hug the chicken so that the udders wrapped around him. It was just, it was really weird. It was like, why would you put that in a cartoon for children to see? Like, it was just really weird the way that they did stuff, you know? And so, yeah, there were, yeah, there was, there was just things. Like, my, my dad did not let me watch cartoons and stuff. I wasn't allowed to watch even when I became a teenager, I wasn't really allowed to watch The Simpsons. I wasn't allowed to watch um, South Park or, or anything like that. Oddly enough, though, when I was a teenager, my friend got me into Family Guy. And at the time, Family Guy was still very new. And so, um, and so like, I would just go over to my friend's house and watch Family Guy. And I think at some point, my dad was just like, okay, well... You're old enough, and I can't really stop you from going to your friend's house to watch it. So I got really into Family Guy, but I never got into The Simpsons because I didn't grow up with it the same way. So it's funny. <laughs> it's just funny. Because when I talk about that, people are just like so shocked. Like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff you haven't seen. And I'm like, yeah, I just wasn't allowed to watch it. And now I'm not even interested. Like, I have no desire to watch South Park. Not because I hate it or anything, it's just I've never really seen it, you know? And so I have no desire to see it. Um, okay, so let's see here. Conrad says, those weird cartoons say a lot about their creators. They do, don't they? <laughs> We are revealed in our art. Isn't that the truth? Um, Air Eero says, I said this to Conrad. Sterling stated that one of the boiler rooms was originally going to be kept intact, 
but sadly the Museum of the Seas needed more space, so all the boiler rooms are gutted. Yes, that is true. They they were planning to keep one of the boiler rooms and I think one of the turbo generator rooms um, as part of like an exhibit. Uh, but yeah, the Museum of the Sea insisted that they needed all the space that they could get it, it, to maximize profits, to create a, the best museum possible. So they removed it, and then the Museum of the Sea never ended up using the space at all because they didn't. They ran out of money. You know, they didn't have enough money to do the the full idea that they had. Chris says, hey Alex, did you ever watch Courage the Cowardly Dog? Yes, in fact, I did. I was a big fan of that show when I was younger. And that show I was able to watch because it came on at a certain time of day when my dad was at work. So I would just turn on the TV and Courage the Cowardly Dog would be on. I just watched that. And I actually liked that show. I've always been interested in, like, gothic stuff. So, gothic movies, gothic, you know, all kinds of stuff. And Courage the Cowardly Dog is very gothic. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem like it, because it just seems like a some kind of, like, you know, weird show. But it's, there's a lot of gothic themes in there. So I actually really like that show. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Steve, um, Adult Swim cartoons, yeah, I haven't seen any. Besides, I think Family Guy was on Adult Swim before, wasn't it? at some point. So I think that's the only time I ever saw an Adult Swim cartoon was Family Guy. Um, I do remember being over at a friend's house as a teenager and like some kind of Adult Swim cartoon came on. It was like a group of friends that were all like concession stand food. It was weird. I was, and I was like watching this. I'm like, you like, why do you watch this stuff? And he's like, it's funny. I'm like, it's... It's stupid. <laughs> so I was just like, I could never get into it. Um, <laughs> Ozzy says, here comes Mighty Mouse. <laughs> yeah, uh, the kinds of stuff I did watch, though, I mean, this is crazy, but, like, I would wake up in the morning to go to school, and, like, the first cartoons that I was able to watch on television that would be on at that time would be things like the Smurfs, or like, um... Yeah, that is the Smurfs, isn't it? The ones with the... No, there was another show. There was another show. I don't remember what it's called. But they had, like... Like... An antenna. A single antenna on their head. And they lived in an underwater world. What was that? I don't remember what it was called. But they had like a single antenna and they lived in an underwater world and, and it was a lot like the Smurfs um, but just underwater um, yeah so there so that would play and then I want to say I also did get to watch Snorks. Thank you so much, Snorks. Yes. Let's see, my friend uh, uh, Steve R, the the one that's Expedition Steve in the chat. He and I like a lot of the same cartoons and stuff because I watched all the old cartoons, like the stuff that was like from his generation and before that. So it's actually kind of funny because like he and I talk about like we we reference that stuff all the time when we have like conversations. But, like, my other friends, you know, like Chris, you know, he doesn't get a lot of the the stuff because he hasn't seen those things. So, <laughs> so like, I can make, like, like a reference to, like, the Snorks or, like, the, or, like, the, the Smurfs or, 
or something, and you know, and yeah, and and Steve will get it. <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez saved the day. Yeah, I used to watch Speedy Gonzalez as well. The Littles. That sounds familiar. That does sound familiar. Um, but yeah, there was... When I was a kid, I used to watch stuff like Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh. So... Uh, I would, like, get ready for school and those two shows would be on. And I remember I'd be, like, I'd have to brush my teeth so I'd come back out to the living room and stand in front of the TV while I brushed my teeth watching, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! or something. And uh, I was obsessed with, with those shows. Although, I think... No, I did... I My dad did buy me a set of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards once. And, like, I would go to school and during lunchtime, like, me and my friends would play, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't know how, it, how you play it anymore. I forgot, but... I'd play Yu-Gi-Oh. I never got into Pokemon. I just never... I never watched Pokemon. So I've never gotten into it. Um, but I was into Digimon. And I was into, like, Yu-Gi-Oh. And then there was a show... <laughs> there was a show with, like... Superhero mummies. They were, like... Yeah, they were literally, like, Egyptian mummies that came back to life to fight crime or something. It was really weird, but it was such a cool show. And then I would stay at my mom's house on the weekends, and Sunday mornings was the Disney cartoon lineup called One Saturday Morning. So my sister and I would sit in front of the TV and we'd sing the One Saturday Morning theme song, you know, Friday morning, wake up time, something, 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 one Saturday morning, you know, so I'd sit there, like, and we'd sing that, five hours of summer, once a week, one Saturday morning, yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, and then they'd do all kinds of Disney shows, I watched, like, Darkwing Duck, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and all kinds of stuff. They had all kinds of stuff. King of Battleships says, Why did Cunard not make Queen Mary fuel efficient? Well, that's one of those answers I feel like you already know the answer to. Because you've seen all my videos, <clears throat> but, um... And I know you commented on that one video that talked about it, but I guess to to, to kind of refresh your memory, um, so the reason why was because was because they needed a ship that could capture the blue ribbon. So the thing is, is that back then, it's not like today where like, well, even today like, racing vehicles are always fuel guzzlers. You never see a racing vehicle that can go super fast but is super fuel efficient. Like, you just don't see it, you know? To go fast in any kind of vehicle, and I mean really fast, you need a lot of fuel. You need a lot of horsepower. You need a lot of, you know, machinery to get it, to get the job done. So... Cunard really wanted a ship that would capture the Blue Ribbon. And so to do that, they designed the Queen Mary to have whatever um, machinery was necessary to do that. It wasn't about trying to make the Queen Mary a gas guzzler. That's not That wasn't what they set out to do. They did it because they needed the ship to go fast, and that was just the best way to do it. And they did what they could to make her fuel efficient. But in 1936, fuel efficient was just a very loose word, you know. Um, with Queen Elizabeth, they didn't need to worry about building a ship that could win the Blue Ribbon because they already had one. They had the Queen Mary. So when they were building the Queen Elizabeth, they weren't concerned about her going fast or being the fastest ship. 
they were just concerned about get it, making sure that she could keep up with the Queen Mary during a normal service run and um, and doing so in the most fuel efficient way possible. And so with Queen Elizabeth, they only gave her what was necessary to operate, but the Queen Mary had extra, so that way she could win the Blue Ribbon. But as with anything, you build all that machinery to win the Blue Ribbon, and you win the Blue Ribbon, and now what? You're stuck with all that machinery that ends up guzzling more fuel than you can afford. So, of course, when the ships had to be retired, Queen Mary had to be retired first because she just guzzled more fuel than Queen Elizabeth did. So she was more expensive to operate. Um, The Brady Bunch. Why Cooper? Oh gosh, I used to watch The Brady Bunch. My mom would watch... She had like this afternoon lineup that she would watch while my sister and I were at school or whatever. And if we were home sick, we'd end up watching TV with her or something. And she would watch Little House on the Prairie. She would watch um, The Brady Bunch. And then I Love Lucy. So now to this day, whenever I see those shows, I can't help but think of my mother because she would always watch those. Those That was just her lineup of shows that she always watched. And I, I remember like a year or two ago, I decided to watch all of the episodes of I Love Lucy because I hadn't seen them all. So I wanted to say, actually, actually I did see them all because when I was watching the lineup, I was like, oh, I remember this episode. Oh, I remember this episode. So I didn't realize it, but I had seen all the episodes of Isle of Lucy. Uh, I just didn't realize it. <laughs> so I was watching them all in order from beginning to end. And I was like, oh, I've seen these before. Um, oh, The Price is Right. Oh my gosh, my great-grandmother would watch that all the time. So when I was with her, I'd sit there watching The Price is Right. Yeah. I don't think I was very good at guessing the prices to anything, but it was still fun to watch it. This, this chair is so uncomfortable to sit on. I have to end this live stream soon because I can't sit here any longer. Well, plus I have things to do. That's already two forty. Don't judge me, Steve. What's how's the old saying go? Only he only he without sin can cast the first stone. <laughs> so don't make fun of me. for and he's like what's wrong with you Steve I have the wildest assortment of friends I swear now there we go
Ron says, Alex, are the deck plans for the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth exactly the same? No. They are quite different, actually. And that's because... The placement of Queen Elizabeth's boiler rooms necessitated a different placement of the two funnel hatches. And Queen Mary had three funnel hatches. So not only were they in different areas, but her funnel hatches had, you know, Queen Mary had one more area of negative space throughout every deck. So the, uh, the placement of everything on the Queen Elizabeth was quite altered from Queen Mary's deck plans. Now, unfortunately, I do not own Queen Elizabeth deck plans. That's the sad part. Um, someone I know does, and they tried sending me pictures of it, but the pictures they sent me weren't very useful. I, I couldn't really see what was on the pictures. Um, but yeah, I wish I had deck plans of Queen Elizabeth, but no, nothing on there is really in the same spot. Mark. Mark lives in the land down under, so they call it. Anyway, seems like the chat is slowing down, and I can't sit in this chair any longer. It's just so painful. Um, so yeah, uh, videos. I've been working on videos, and then having to stop because I realize they're not the video. I'd like work on a video, I'd be like, oh, people are going to love this. And then I'd, I'd work on it and be like, people are not going to love this. And I'd stop working on it. So I don't know what video will be out. I've been trying to get a video out every week. But like I said, I end up stopping going, no one's going to watch this. So um, I guess we'll see. Um, but uh, in the description below are links to my Alex the Railroader channel, which will soon have an update video about the train layout. That's also where you will find live streams of me in the train room, uh, running the trains and stuff like that from now on. Um, and then there's also a link to the new channel I'll be working on with my friend Eric, where we react to movies and stuff that he's never seen before, and he's pretty much never seen anything. Um, so that doesn't have its first video yet, but it's in the description below. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. Anyway, folks, it's been really great to do this live stream with you guys. I am still working on saving up money for my UK trip, but just please bear in mind it's going to take a while. I'm really only able to put a few bucks a month in my account. And I was expecting that I would have a lot more money than that by now. But it is it is what it is, and I'm doing the best I can. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah. Anyway, folks, thanks all for watching. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.